In this video, we're going to walk you through domain mapping with WordPress multi-site. To do this, you need to have at least two domains, one of those currently up and running with your hosting provider, ideally with WordPress multi-site installed, access to your WordPress dashboard, and access to your web host control panel, or at least control over uh, parked domains and various settings pertaining to DNS. On my screen, you can see that we're looking at the network dashboard of a website and the website we're looking at is one that you may have seen in previous videos it's ourmusicblog.com however I'm not using a, a recycled WordPress installation it's brand new uh, I've already gone through and set up multi-site though uh, but at this time there are no extra domains or subdomains or anything running one important thing to note is that it's currently running with a subdomain structure if you're using a subdirectory structure that's fine as well uh, there are just some slight differences to the overall process here. Uh, in another tab in my browser, I've got the WordPress MU domain mapping plugin uh, open and available uh, because we do need to download that and install it onto our website. Uh, the process of installing this plugin is actually really different to how you would install any other plugin that you've ever installed before. Uh, and finally, I've just got my web hosting control panel here. So let's get started. As you can see on my screen, I'm looking at park domains. Uh, now, as mentioned earlier, we're using a subdomain WordPress multi-site structure. That means that when it comes to adding new domains, we need to use parked domains. So what I'm going to do now is just add my domain here, which my second domain is comicsounds.in, and then hit create. Uh, for most web hosts, when you do this, it will actually redirect uh, that domain into public HTML. And that's where we need to redirect it to anyway. So make sure whenever you add a park domain and you're using it in this way, it actually does redirect to here. Now what we need to do is go back into the WordPress plugin repository and if you haven't already downloaded this plugin, you need to download it right now. And when you've done that and you've extracted it, uh, what you'll need to do is open up your FTP client or similar application. Here you can see on my screen, uh, I've got my FTP client open and on the left hand side I've got the plugin and on the right hand side I've got the WP content folder. So what I need to do first is grab sunrise.php and upload that just directly into the WP content folder. That's been done so what I need to now do is create a new folder and the name of the folder is mu-plugins. mu in this case stands for must use so it's basically a folder that you put plugins that need to be used by WordPress every single time it loads no matter what. Uh, you can use this to force it to load other plugins but just because you can do that doesn't necessarily mean that you should do it either. Uh, only if a plugin tells you to use this folder should you actually use it. From here we need to go into the public HTML directory uh, or if it's different on your server just wherever you've actually got WordPress installed. So find wp-config in that folder and then we need to open uh, so you can make some small changes. You can use whatever editor you like for this, it doesn't really matter, uh, it's entirely up to you. And what we need to put in is define and then brackets and single quotes, sunrise, all in capitals of course, uh, then a comma and then single quotes again and on within that and close it off with a closing bracket and semicolon and then hit save. You can close WP config. Uh, we, we don't need to actually come back and do anything to it. What we do need to do now though is jump back into the WordPress dashboard and go into the network dashboard. On the left hand side, if you go to settings, uh, you just hover your mouse over that, you'll see you've now got domain mapping and domains that appear in this menu. And this is where we're going to do most of our work today. However, before we do this, what I'd actually like to do is create a new site. So if we go into the list of sites, we've only got the one uh, domain there at the moment, as you can see, which is ourmusicblog.com. So I'm going to create a new one and I'm just going to call it CS because I think that's nice and easy to remember. Um, you know, for Comic Sans, which is the other domain that I'm using, the site title, we'll call it Comic Sans.in, that sounds good. And then for the admin email, you can obviously put in uh, whatever you like. I'm just going to use my email address uh, that I'm already using for, for WordPress. That's been added to the network, which is wonderful. And now what we do is go into settings and domain mapping. And this is where we do some of the initial configuration. Uh, you can see here, we've got the server IP address field. You need to put in the IP address of your server here, which you can get simply by 
uh, opening a terminal or a command prompt, uh, depending on the operating system you use, and pinging your domain name. It should actually return your website's IP address. Alternatively, if you just Google uh, what's my server IP, uh, you'll find a myriad of websites that can uh, perform this for you. Alternatively, if you don't want to use your server IP address, you can set a CNAME record, uh, but for most people using just the server IP address is fine. And then below this we can see we've got some options available. Uh, I recommend only using permanent redirect, user domain mapping page, and redirect administration pages to the site's original domain. But of course what you may choose to use or want to use is going to change uh, based on your individual circumstance. When you're done making any changes here, you just need to hit save. Uh, wait for that to refresh the page and then you know that it's been done. Uh, and from here, what we can do is go into domains and add a new domain very easily. So the site ID, this is pretty important. If you go into sites actually before we just go into there and you see CS and you just hover over the edit link and you look down into the link that it's trying to bring up and you can see there is ID 3. That's the ID that we need to map to. So We'll just jump back here into domains and site ID of three, put in the domain that we want, set it to the primary domain for that site and then hit save. So in here, if you go down, you can see that we've got that successfully uh, mapped in here. And if we go back into the sites and all sites list, we can see over on the right hand column under mapping, we've got this subdomain uh, WordPress installation mapped to comicsans.in. So now if we go to comicsans.in in the browser, we can see that it's actually going to the correct place. And we can use this site uh, just as you've ever used any WordPress site ever before. All the links are in the right place. Uh, and you can log into the dashboard uh, just the same way as you ever have ever. So that's where we're going to wind up now. Uh, we've gone through the process of creating a WordPress multi-site network using the domain mapping plugin so that you can have multiple websites on the same multi-site network but using different domains. It's really, really straightforward to do, uh, even if you don't have a great deal of experience with multi-site or anything super technical before, you should still be reasonably able to follow through these instructions to actually get this result. If you have any questions about what we've done uh, or there's something that's not so super clear for you, please feel free to ask in the comments below.